What's up guys, it's Tyler from House of Cards TCG and today we're bringing you a live duel where we proxied the new Cyberstorm access cards and we were able to bring them to you in a live duel where you get to see two decks going up against each other. This time we have my deck which is Bestial Control Adventure versus Rika Sun Avalon. I have future videos planned, we, we spent the whole night, we, Shane and I recorded a bunch of duels, we got super heavy, pearly, all that. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can see all the future videos that we're about to do. I think in the next two weeks, we're going to drop like six to seven live duel videos as well as some profiles. So you get to check it out, including mine, which is Bestial Control Post Cyberstorm Access. It's actually insane. Uh, little note, I went five and zero that night. So you're going to see all my duels with that and my profile. So make sure to subscribe to the channel. We truly appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy some live duel with Cyberstorm Access. Do keep in mind, if you're watching this in the future, that this was before the set released. So obviously decks were still trying to be figured out. There may be some misplaying going on, but we get to take it back because we're just testing. So get to keep that in mind. And I hope you enjoy this live duel with the commentary. Comment down below if you enjoy this type of content. And as always... Make sure to subscribe to the channel. We truly appreciate it. All right, without further ado, let's hop into a Bestial Control Adventure, Bestial Adventure Control, however you want to say it, versus Rika Sun Avalon. All right, diving into the first match. This was my first time playing this deck. I actually did not play Bestial Control last format, so... Game one was a little rough for me, I'll be honest with you. I was still figuring out intricacies of the deck, but this was game one of five that we played in that night, and I went 5-0 and with this deck, so we obviously picked it up and figured it out really well. But game one of this match right here definitely was a learning curve for me. So um, I think I ended up winning the die roll here, and again, I'm going against Rika Sun Avalon, an incredible Rika Sun Avalon player. Alex has been playing this deck for a very long time. He's a very good Rika player. Um, so we're going to start with the Lubelion pitch. That usually goes ahead and searches the Magnum up. And if I don't have the Adventure Engine online, which I do, I have Fateful. Uh, now the next check is to see if I have a level 2 tuner. And if I have a level 2 tuner, then we can go into the Mud Dragon plays. But we're going to go ahead and discard the Destrudo, which is really good. We're going to link off the Enchantress because it's a Spellcaster for the Artemis. And then we could banish the Enchantress, and that's going to go ahead and search us out a right. And as you can see... Uh, we do a lot of searching, but we do play Gamma, which protects us because we do a lot of searching before we even have a monster on the field. Uh, this must mean we have access to the level 2 tuner, and if we do, we can go into some Mud Dragon plays here. And I do see it in the hand. I see the Apple Dragon. So we get to special summon the Apple Dragon because we control a non-effect monster. And we are now going to go ahead and take those, and we're going to make the Mud Dragon. We're going to go ahead and activate the Mud Dragon effect using the Artemis and the Mud Dragon to go for a Albion. Then we're going to go ahead and activate Albion, banishing Mud Dragon and Artemis to bring out the Grand Goyle. Now we're going to Grand Goyle effect. And that's going to go ahead and send us out our Albion the Shrouded Dragon. We're going to go ahead and activate the Albion in the Graveyard effect because it's not in the hand and we already have access to Lobelion, obviously. And that's going to go ahead and send us a regain. We're going to be able to activate that at the end phase with Beast. And that's the whole play with that. You want to set up all three of your branded spells or traps. And if you can set up all three of them, it's really hard for you to lose. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and Lubelion. Lubelion is going to bring out Beast. And we're going to go ahead and banish the Apple Dragon in the graveyard. And that's going to bring out a token. We take Lubelion and that token. And we're going to go ahead and make an... Uh, uh, Dispotter. Bestial Dispotter is going to go ahead and bring back the Apple Dragon. And then we're going to go ahead and take the Grand Goyle and the Apple uh, Dragon. I believe we're going to make a Barone with that. Now we already have Beast face up on the floor. Um, oh, we go ahead and Destrudo. I think we're going to go ahead and Destrudo that so that we can go ahead and make ourselves a seal as well. So Destrudo is going to go ahead. Oh, we have Magma in hand. I forgot about Magma in hand. Yes, so we're going to Destrudo, bring that out. Then we're going to go ahead and take Magma and Destrudo. Destrudo actually goes to the bottom of the deck. And we're going to make a seal so we have all those. Now at end phase, we're going to have Beast is going to reset our branded regained. Then we have Albion in the graveyard, which is then going to go ahead and set the, I call it a two day. I think a two day is a great name for it, which is going to be a floodgate, especially against Rika. It's going to be really good because his link monsters will be banished and it's going to allow us to go ahead and synchro summon on his turn. And then we have our Druus Worm. Now here, this was a good learning lesson for me because as you can see, I'm about to get really cooked on this game one, even though I full comboed here. Um, you're about to see it. I, I actually, this is a really good learning lesson for me because the two days are really broken card. So I want to find a way to go into Savage or go into uh, Hot Red on my opponent's turn. And you're going to see why. 
So he's gonna go ahead and dark ruler the board, which is fine. So I need to, I should have, I really forgot that regained is when your opponent normal special summons you get to bring back. And so I ideally maybe should have summoned Druus Worm at the end phase too, because then I'd have Druus Worm, which then I could go ahead and activate Seal. Seal could then go ahead and bring out the Apple Dragon, which is what you're gonna see here that I do. And then you could go ahead and make Savage in battle, because he goes into battle phase here. So he says battle phase. So I was attempting to make a um, Savage here, which would have beat the Dark Ruler evenly, which I wanted to play around. However, he doesn't have a monster on his field, so I can't quick effect summon the Druus Worm. And I completely forgot about that. Um, so I definitely, I think I should have summoned Druus Worm at the end of my turn. But then I wouldn't, yeah, I mean... I wouldn't have it, so I couldn't summon an end phase. I don't know how I beat that. I'm going to figure out a way to beat that. So, yeah, it actually did not matter because he had another evenly in his hand. So, he actually had Dark Ruler double evenly. So, I mean, we were getting we were getting cooked either way. It just, it, it was happening. Um, but, yeah, so I'm trying to figure out a way to play this deck where I can bring out Savage on my opponent's turn. So, if they Dark Ruler evenly me, I can still bring out Savage and negate the evenly. But I left Beast up. Maybe I should have left Regained up. That probably would have been the best play. I don't know. I guess I was trying to think about you know, going Druus Worm and going um, Beast here. I actually summoned Druus Worm. This was a misplay. Um, he lets me take it back because obviously I can't send a normal summon monster with Druus Worm. Again, learning the Bestial Control. He lets me take it back in. This is just testing. But when he activates the Lone Fire effect, I'm just going to go ahead and do it there since that was going to be my play anyway. Um, so he goes ahead and brings out the Rika Petal. And then, yeah, here I just go ahead and do the same play that I was going to do, which was Beast Send. So that's basically my only interruption. I had full combo, but I think he just Dark Ruler evenly me. I, there was nothing I could do. But he passes on that because, obviously, he has double evenly with Dark Ruler. So if we just had any kind of follow-up here, any kind of play, uh, I don't know what our top deck was. Let's see what we end up doing here. So I know we're taking a lot of time to think because obviously this is a big moment. I'm, I wish I knew what we top decked. Oh, so we have another Apple Dragon. I guess we could go Apple Dragon into Striker, but that doesn't really do anything. You you really want to save the Apple Dragon just in case you get to a Bestial because then you can make a Synchro 8. But I banish Seal anyway, so I don't even have a Link Monster in the Graveyard, which was probably a misplay. I probably should have activated Seal Effect and got Seal into the Graveyard, which is... Um, another thing that I realized because I scoop here I end up picking up but he's showing that he had the other evenly eaten away so if I went savage he still was going to get it but I, I go ahead and pick it up um, yeah I think that the better play there would have been to tribute seal go ahead and bring something out it gets banished anyway but that way you get the link monster in the graveyard because in that instance I had a bestial plus I had a uh level two the apple dragon i probably could have made savage and at least put up in the gate but anyway that was game one that was me feeling out the deck right so we're just trying to figure this out we're trying to get we're trying to understand how this deck works now let's get into game two where i really go off with this deck and show you all right all right i know how to play i got the jitters out now we're gonna go ahead and play so let's go ahead and move into game two now, what I, from what I remember, great game two was a grind. Like, him and I went way, really back and forth, which is really what the deck does. Um, I got to put Scarlet, Red Dragon, Archfiend, I think, in the extra deck just to win in time because this is a grindy deck. But uh, let's see. All right, game two, let's see how we're going to start out here. So we go ahead and start with the Upstart Goblin, which is phenomenal because this sends the Regained, which is, again, the idea of the deck is to set up all three spells and traps, right? Regained, Beast, and the Two-Day. And if you can set up all three, you're basically in a, in a really good position, unless you get double evenly Dark Rulered. I'm just saying. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start with the Albion on the Shrouded Dragon. That's going to set that up. We're going to go ahead and normal the Enchantress. Enchantress is going to link off for the Artemis. That gets your light up on the grave. So if you don't have access to the Chaos Dragon, you can't get the light. That's a way to get to the light. We're going to banish the Enchantress that grabs us that right. We're going to activate right, bring out the token, and that's going to bring out the Fateful Adventurer. We activate Fateful Adventurer here. Now, let's see if we're able to set up the Omni Negate this time. I I believe that Alex does a really good job with my board here, too. I think I, he, I, I can't remember exactly how he does it, but he does a good job here. So we're going to go ahead, Griffin, and we pitch the Magna. That's going to be able to get a Dark into the Graveyard, which I believe was our play in order to do that, which is why the Adventure Engine partners really well with this, too. 
it helps you get lights and darks into the graveyard by being able to discard and, it, and that is exactly what we did there so we go ahead and activate magma magma is going to search and this might be our play here maybe we set up the omni negate with the magma search for a druid swarm um I, we grab Baldrake here. Okay, so we probably had Druusworm in our hand. We could have summoned it and we could have used it to make a seal. But instead, um, I think I decide to end this with an Omni Negate and Druusworm and Baldrake. Um, I can use the Baldrake to send the Artemis, obviously, and still have my dragons on board. So he goes ahead and Dark Rulers. The guy's just got it. I mean, I don't know what to do. He's just got it. But it stops my Omni Negate, and that's basically it on this hand. Unexpected die is going to go ahead and bring out Loki. Um, you know me, I'm the plant guy, man. I love seeing plants. Uh, I'm more of an adventure Sun Avalon player, but I love seeing the Rika Sun Avalon too. So I just got to read Khan Khan real quick. He's going to go ahead and tribute off my Griffin. Brings out Mudan. Mudan's going to go ahead and search. Let's see what happens here. Again, I know that we grind, grind this deck out. And there might be a couple plays here that, um, you know, back and forth that we could have done. And I think we talk about it at the end, which, well, of course, I'll go for it. I'm sure he grabbed a Glamour here. I'm sure what that, that is. Yeah, Glamour. All right, he's going to go ahead and get Ogred on the Kong Con. There's really nothing else to Ogre in this deck. Um, with Sewing, they could pretty much protect any of their links. So I was thinking about really what should I Ogre on this deck. And then so I just wanted to get rid of the Field Spell. I knew if I could get rid of the Field Spell, he couldn't tribute any of my monsters, which would then get me in a good position. Uh, my turn to actually do a lot. So we're going to go ahead and bring out Baldrake here by banishing the Ogre. And I really wanted to get Ogre into the graveyard. So Ogre, obviously, or Baldrake, here's where I'm kind of learning about Baldrake a little bit. Um, it obviously cannot do that there. And I, again, still jittery, filling out the deck a little bit. So it has to be when your opponent Link summons, XYZs, yeah, Rituals, or Fusions. Um, then you or synchros, then you can go ahead and send it. So we got that under the way. Figured that out. I was like, okay, okay, cool, cool. let's keep on playing here. So he activates Glamour. Glamour is going to go ahead and I think grab himself a pedal. Is that what that is? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Rika Pedal. He's going to go ahead and summon the Rika Pedal. He's going to activate the effect. Rika Pedal is then going to go ahead and search him out a Rika monster. And he's going to go ahead and grab the uh, Stow Drop. Stow Drop's really good because then it gets a special summon from the hand as well. He's going to link that off, go for the Dryas. Dryas effect is going to activate. That's going to go ahead and grab sewing. Oh, he doesn't because he had a top deck that or he already had the sewing in hand. I hate when that happens. I hate when you have sewing. It's just, it's unfortunate. But he brings out the Sunseed Twin. Twins then going to go ahead and activate. And Dryas is going to be chaining two. Dryas is going to go ahead and bring out Thrasher. Twins are then going to go ahead and bring back out the Loki. He's going to gain the thousand that he just took off the sewing. And then from here, he's thinking about what he's going to do. He's going to link those off for a Jasmine. So now he's going to go ahead and link off the twin, and that's going to go ahead and bring out the Dryas. Then we're going to go ahead and think here. Actually, uh, this was a question that came up with Baldrake. He's going to link off the Loki. That's going to bring out Healer. Then Healer's going to target Dryas, and then that's going to target or that's going to trigger the Jasmine to search. But Baldrake says the wording is really weird. Maybe you can let us know down in the comments. But when they link summon, can you? take any link summoned or extra deck monster and get rid of it or does it have to be the one that is link summoned at that time of the effect of baldrick activating because the wording is a little weird maybe you can understand what i'm trying to say here but uh he's gonna go ahead and activate jasmine jasmine's gonna go ahead and send the dryas and that's gonna go ahead and special summon out from the a plant from the deck i think he searched premula by the way but uh that's gonna go ahead and bring out looks like princess i think uh, he's going to go ahead and activate the Snowdrop. Snowdrop's going to go ahead and tribute off the healer. That's going to bring out the Snowdrop, and that's going to bring out the Primula. So now he's got a whole board here, uh, so we got to decide what we're going to do. He's going to go ahead and overlay. I think this is going to bring out Strena. It is. So now he has Strena on the field as well. So yeah, Baldrick is a really weird wording. I'm going to have to look that up and figure that out. But uh, So yeah, he's going to go ahead and grab himself the Glamour, or Con, -Con I mean. So now he's going to go ahead and activate Snowdrop. Snowdrop's going to go ahead and uh, target and make both level 8 because there's one in the graveyard. And I think that's a teardrop there. Sorry for the glare. That, that double sleeve is really messing with that glare. But that is definitely teardrop. 
So I gotta let him know with the double sleeving. The double sleeving is definitely gonna provide the glare. So going forward on future videos, then we can figure that out so we can make sure that we don't double sleeve because you can see my extract monsters are actually fine. So it's really the double sleeving that provides the glare. That's really good to know. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and I believe that I have to use the Baldrake effect here and send the, either this, yeah, I have to send this the teardrop because we don't want that. <laughs> And we're just confirming Baldrick. So yeah, Baldrick's wording is really weird. It says you can send any of those extra special summon monsters and uh, banish it, right? So does it have to be the one that's actually summoned? Then you activate Baldrick on the summon? Or can it be like, can I send Strin in this effect? And that was the work question that we had. I actually never looked it up to find the answer to that. But that's what him and I are going back and forth on. We're trying to figure out is what is the actual correct answer to this? Uh, but it doesn't really matter. He's going to go ahead and negate. Yeah, but he's going to let that go through. So we're going to go ahead and banish the teardrop. And then I think he activated the teardrop effect. And he's thinking on what to tribute here. So he's looking at my graveyard. So he's going to go ahead and tribute off the Baldrake, which is fine. And now he's going to go ahead and that is a Jasmine up in the extra monster zone for him. So he's going to go ahead and he's thinking about the link here. He's obviously going to go into the... Uh, Melius, and then Melius is going to go ahead and bring back out the Loki. And he is under Dark Ruler, so he can't OTK me here. But he's going to go ahead and bring out the Bengal Lancer. Now, here's the thing. He did put Jasmine in the graveyard, which is really good for me because this finally has a light in his graveyard. And so I'm able to, I can banish that if I want to. So he's going to go ahead and hit over my Magnumut. And he actually cannot take my token. So he's going to leave my token on the field because Strena is at 2,000 attack. So, it looks like I'm looking to at the end phase. I'm going to go ahead and summon out the Druus Worm. I could have banished the Jasmine here, but again, we were limited on the space that we were able to play with. Otherwise, I would have looked at his graveyard and I probably would have banished the Jasmine. It really didn't make a difference in this game, but uh, it could come up in effect when they bring out the Bengal Lancer. If they only have access to like two Jasmine or something like that, it could actually come up. But here, this might be a small little mistake again. Game match one with this deck, I was definitely figuring it out, still piloting it. When you look at future matches, which I'm going to post, I have uh, three other matches I recorded against Super Heavy and two against Pearly. You can see I absolutely piloted this deck so much better. So again, still learning this deck, but uh, we actually don't summon the Druus Worm here. But he does... Oh, he negates it with the Princess, which tributes the Strena, which brings out the Hyperton. So he actually negated the Druus Worm with his Princess that was in the graveyard. And that actually brought out the Hyperton. So here we're going to go ahead and search out the Enchantress. Now we're looking at what we're going to do here. So I go ahead and discard... I think I discarded the Apple Dragon, maybe. I can't really tell what I discarded there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and attach the Draco back. Draco back's going to go ahead. And I'm thinking here, I took a long time here to think on what I wanted to bounce with the Draco back. Uh, this was a big decision, but I do end up going ahead and bouncing the Hyperton because Bengal Lancer, I actually wanted in the graveyard so I could banish it. And Hyperton actually being able to destroy my monster was a big problem for me because I had, I think I have uh, something in the graveyard that I want to activate or there was, there was something, I think Druid Swarm, I can't I'm about to figure it out, but it was really important that I got rid of the Hyperton because I did not want the destruction effect to activate. Yeah, he's checking this phone. I took a long time on this. I've been really thinking, and you know what? I actually cannot remember if I say summon Magna at the end of that turn. So I go ahead and bounce the Hyperton. Now from here, we are going to go ahead and see the, I'm thinking here, again, I know this is a big, we're going to go ahead and banish the Magistus to bring out the Druus Worm. Again, I should have actually banished the Jasmine in his graveyard instead of my um, only link in the graveyard, so that was a misplay on that one, but you know, you live and you learn. So we do bring out the Druus Worm here. He's got the Bengal Lancer up on the extra monster zone. I set one, and then I actually pass to that. So if he outs my Druus Worm, at the end phase, he's going to go ahead and bring out the pedal, which is fine. So now it's his turn. Uh, I got a Bengal Lancer and a pedal, and I do flip the Beast. Beast is going to go ahead and send the Druus Worm, and then we're going to go ahead and pop the pedal, and we're going to go ahead and send the 
uh, Bengal Lancer off of the Druid Swarm effect. So he can obviously bring back the Bengal Lancer, but this is actually going to buy me a turn, which is really good because I know that he's on top deck. Uh, so that interaction right there, not, him not being able to link someone or get into his Rika stuff is going to be really good. But he does have a Princess in hand, so he's going to go ahead and normal summon or special summon out the Princess. That's going to trigger the Kon Kon. Kon Kon's going to go ahead and grab himself a Glamour. No, it doesn't trigger the Kon Kon, but he can activate because he controls Rika. Now he's going to go ahead and activate uh, the Glamour. And that's going to go ahead and grab himself another Petal. He is going to go ahead and uh, normal summon out the Petal. I'm not sure how I actually come back in this um, this duel. Maybe he's out of resources because he's gone through all of his resources, but I'm very surprised here. So he's going to go ahead and tribute off my token to bring out the Mudan. Mudan's going to go ahead and grab the sheet. It's kind of crazy because I know the outcome of this game. Uh, he's going to bring out the Benga Lancer. And we're going to take some damage here, but it's not game. Again, he's already gone through a lot of his Stun Avalon stuff too. So that was a really big, just a to send the Melius, the healer, the Dryas, all that stuff's already been played through. So it's really been a grind match and he's running out of resources in his extra deck where I've only really only played with Bestials and Adventures at this point. My extra deck's still pretty stacked. So he's going to go ahead and bring out the, um, this was big for me too, the, the Peony. So he actually whiffs on the Peony as three spells that go to the graveyard. So this was really huge for me knowing that Peony actually was a whiff. So we're updating the life points. He goes ahead and attacks. He's going to set the Rika Sheet and fan his graveyard. And then we're going to go ahead and pass. Uh, Beast is going to go ahead and activate my regain. And this is really where it just becomes too much for him. Because now I'm getting both my bestial traps or my branded traps and spells online. And now it just becomes almost like too much for him. Because um, now we can just keep recurring resources every turn. Magna keeps searching and it just becomes a lot. So we have the Enchantress here. We're going to discard it. And we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves another token, or right, I should say. So that's going to go ahead and grab our right. Let's see what we end up. I think we just activate, or maybe we just pass on this. I'm not 100% sure. Let's see. Uh, we're going to go ahead and activate right. Right's good. That's going to bring out another token. Oh, we are going to attack over. We're going to get that link two off the field. We definitely don't want the link two on the field. Uh, he's going to go ahead and activate the sheet, I believe, here. Nope, he does not. He is thinking about it, though. So we're going to go ahead and go token into the Mudan. So I get rid of the Rika. That way he doesn't have a Rika on the field. That was my thought behind that. And um, now from here, he's going to go ahead and bring out the pedal at the end phase. And that's going to trigger my regain. So now because he brought out the pedal, that goes ahead and triggers my regain. Regain is going to bring out Magma. Magma is going to go ahead and activate. And I do believe that he's going to... Uh, negate that with princess but now he's put my so i'm gonna look at what do we do here so he negates and destroys the princess uh that's or the magma what so princess comes out tributes and then negates my magma but that's fine because we still have another regain until next turn so now basically he can't normal or special summon or he knows i'm gonna get another monster on the field it may have been better to spend out the druis worm um, because Druid Swarm obviously could have sent at that point, but I was trying to get a search to get my engine live and going. Um, so here he's really in a tough spot because he doesn't know if he should actually summon. But he does go ahead and summons out the Princess here. So that's going to trigger my regain. Regain's going to go ahead and bring back out another Bistio. This time we bring out the Druid Swarm. So if he were to negate anything now, I mean, I have Beast now. Beast is going to get rid of two monsters, and he's on top deck. So this is really where the control variant comes into play. And we see me just kind of taking over a little bit because the regain bringing back the Druid Swarm, Beast being able to pop a card on the field, Druid Swarm sending a special summon monster to the graveyard is just really good here. So he's going to Peon. That's going to go ahead and... Um, oh, Peon's the one that targets the one in the graveyard, makes them both the same level. <clears throat> So I think that we are going to have to think here before he goes into a Strena. Or maybe when he does summon out the Strena, that's something that we can look into possibly, possibly popping with the Beast. So he does. I, we do let the overlay happen. That's going to go ahead and bring out the Strena. And now here we do have to make a move. So we're going to go ahead and Beast send the Druid Swarm. That's going to pop the Strena. Gets that off the field to get another resource out of his extra deck that we took care of. And then Druid Swarm is going to go ahead and activate. And that's going to probably send the Bengal Answer here, I would imagine. And that's going to go ahead and get banished now because it was already brought back by its effect, leaving him with a sheet and a peon. So he does set another card. 
And it looks like he's going to have to pass on that. I don't even think he can battle us with the token, so he's going to pass. We're going to go ahead and draw. So we have a sheet and random set and the link two to get over. Again, really taking control. Once you get the branded spells and traps, again, you just kind of take control at that point. So let's see what he decides to do here. I see the apple dragon, which is really good because we can go into mud dragon play now. And we could really uh, get our engine live and running. <clears throat> so... I think I activated Faithful Adventurer and then I realized that all my resources are already in the grave. I've been through all three Enchantress and the Griffin, so I actually can't activate Faithful. I was trying to discard something. I think I have a Distrudo in my hand that I was trying to discard. Um, but we are going to see, I think Apple Dragon get special summoned. That's the best play here for sure. I'm holding it. I, Apple Dragon has to come down. And then you go into Mud Dragon plays. So again, still learning how to pilot this deck, still taking my time thinking on this one. I appreciate Alex for being very patient. So we are going to go ahead and normal summon out the Enchantress. We're going to hit over the Peon. He's going to protect it with the Sewing. He is going to take the damage, however. And then end of battle phase, I think he flips evenly on me because he wants to get rid of something. I done, didn't realize that he actually had two other monsters, so I start picking everything up and he's like, oh, wait, I got, <laughs> I have the an, uh, Link two is gone but i have obviously the field spell in another set so i get to keep some stuff so i kept the regain beast obviously regain beast is just insane that reoccurrence is just so good so um he's gonna go ahead and end phase he's thinking if he wants to bring back out the pedal because he knows that regain's just gonna go ahead and bring back out another bestial he does end up bringing out the pedal because he's got no other engine going that's gonna bring out the magma magma's then gonna go ahead and activate and he's just gonna go ahead and negate it with princess So he goes ahead and draws. I think he has the tribute one. I don't know if he tributed one off on that turn. So I have to look back at that. But he does go ahead and grabs himself a princess. He has an unexpected die in his hand. He's worried about the regain. He knows as soon as he summons something, I'm going to bring back out the Druus Worm. So it really put him in a tough position where it's like, do you actually summon anything? Because if you summon, I'm going to get two interruptions right which is Jerusalem plus beast pop so it makes it hard for him to even consider if he wants to summon or not and all his resources from the next track are pretty much gone so again this is a very grindy match here um let's see he got the unexpected die in here that could be but he doesn't really have much as far as melius and healers and dryas's go so he is going to go ahead and normal summon out the princess that's going to go ahead and trigger the regain. Regain's going to go ahead and bring back out the Druus Worm. You know how this play works. He's going to... Tri he flips over the Rika Sheet, which tributes my Druus Worm for cost. So that's really important to note. So just thinking here, but uh, nothing I could do because it does tribute for cost. I think he's thinking on what to tribute. Because he knows if he tributes my Druus from I'm going to get a send, but then it leaves my beast active, so he can't really send my token. Um, he does end up going for my token, leaves my beast on live, and then I'm going to go ahead and beast effect. That's going to go ahead and pop his normal summon, and then I'm going to go ahead and Druus Worm send the special summon pedal back out. Yep, so again... Now it does put his unexpected die live, which is really good for him. So he, I think I see Dark Ruler in his hand. So he's going to go ahead and unexpected die, bring out Loki. I think that the only thing left in his extra deck that he might have is just a Dryas here at this point. Oh, he's still got a pretty full extra deck. So he goes Dryas and he's got a pass. There's nothing else that he could do. So he con con Dryas pass. And uh, again, I got full engine live. So we're going to go ahead and draw. And I think we're off to the races at this point. This is where we kind of full combo him. So we chaos space pitch the gamma. I think I looked at him. I said, if you got Ash, you got Ash, right? Because that was the last piece that I needed was that nice chaos space. We grabbed Black Dragon. Uh, there was a little misplay that he let me take back here, which I'll show you. But uh, So we banished the Gamma to bring out the chaos. We should not have linked it off for Striker Dragon. We just normal summon Apple Dragon. Then Apple Dragon plus the Black Dragon Color Serpent makes Mud Dragon. You search White Dragon. Then you special White Dragon. And that's how you go into Albion. So he does let me take it back. Uh, so before we search that, we're going to go ahead and normal summon. We synchro those both off for a Mud Dragon. Then we go ahead and activate the Black Dragon. That's going to search out the White Dragon. We banish, and then that's going to go ahead and summon out the White Dragon. Put us a light to make Albion. We're going to Chaos Space, put back the Black Dragon, put us some card advantage, and draw a card, which is what we really need here. 
So we do draw. I wonder what we drew here. We're going to have to find out. So now we're going to Mud Dragon effect. And that's going to make the Albion. Now we're going to use Albion banishing the Mud Dragon. And we're going to go ahead and banish the White Dragon. Or we banish Ball Drake here. Oh, I probably would have banished White Dragon, to be honest with you. That's going to make Grand Goyle. Grand Goyle is going to send and he just scoops at that point. So there we go. Bestial control, taking advantage as soon as you get that regained and beast set up. It's just hard to, to outgrind that deck. It's just consistent reoccurrence. But we are going to see Bestial control come back and take game two. Now we go into the infamous game three to see who's going to take this match. All right, guys, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. We're on the road to 3,000 subscribers. And if you enjoy content like this, we're going to be posting up a ton more of these Cyberstorm access duels that we did from this uh, this day. So stay tuned and as long as well as profiles. So make sure to subscribe. It would mean the world to us on the road to 3,000. Help us get there. All right, game three. Here we go. So obviously game one recap broke the board dark ruler double evenly and then game two we were able to set up the control once we got regained beast now game three we're going to see the rika sun avalon player go first and this is where we kind of side into uh you know about 15 going second card slash hand traps that we want to see so this is really good this is um you know really good I was about to say, why does his hand look so crazy? I forgot that he asked if he could side something else in. I was like, yeah, absolutely. So here I'm just setting up my extra deck. You get a little peek of my extra deck. Um, I get it. Gotta find a way to bring out the Savage if they go Dark Ruler evenly. And I do know I should have brought out the Druus Worm on that. And that, and if I can then go Seal, Seal bring out. So it's, I definitely have ways around that. But uh, yeah, he, he just wanted to side again really quick. I was checking the camera. And we should be good to go. All right, so we're going to see the Rika Sun Avalon player go first. And let's see what he goes ahead and starts off with. He is going to go ahead and open up with the unexpected die, which is broken. I mean, that's a one-card combo in itself. He's going to bring out Loki on this one. Then we're going to go ahead and see him link that off. He's going to go into the Dryas. Dryas is then going to go ahead and search out the sewing by... Yep, not paying, but that's when he activates sewing. I think I have the Droll here, so I hit him with the Droll. I do hit him with Droll. Droll is just going to be insane. I put Droll and Ogres in my deck, and they were so good. Ogres, eh. But he's going to go ahead and Talents. Talents look at hand. You can see I have double Magnumut, Regained, and then the Griffin. I remember what happens here. I top deck insane for turn. I mean, I top deck insane. So you're going to go ahead and see him rip the Regained. I think he just got tired of dealing with that card last turn, so he does not want me to have access to the Regained, which is really good. I mean, to be fair, that's probably the best hit there, is you go ahead and hit the Regained, for sure. He's going to go ahead and activate Sewing. that's going to pay a 1,000. That's going to go ahead and bring out the Twin. Then he's going to go Chainlink 1 Twin, Chainlink 2 Dryas. So then that's going to go ahead and bring out the Loki. He's going to gain the 1,000 off of the Dryas, and that's going to bring out a Thrasher here. And so he's going to be back at 8,000, 8,000. Uh, and I do remember now there was a small misplay at the end, but we're going to go over that. So he's going to think about this if he wants to bring out the Jasmine. Because then that puts a light in the grave. He knows that I can go Magnemite here. So and then he goes Jasmine. But I am under Droll, which is con ironically enough. I wonder if I go ahead and summon Magna here and then search when I'm under Droll. So that is something to keep in mind. I honestly can't remember here, but he's going to go ahead and Jasmine Effect's going to go ahead and Tribute. That's going to bring out the Princess. And I think he passes here. Maybe he links off the Loki. He actually wants to summon Princess over there, but then he brings back. Yeah, you link off the Loki for Dryas here. It's really important because if you take any battle damage, then you get to special summon from the extra deck. Um, he does decide to put Princess under the zone that Jasmine has. Jasmine has another effect, which I wasn't sure. If a card, if that card or monster that it points to would be destroyed by battle, the first time it happens, it actually is not. I did not know that about Jasmine. I had to learn that, and I played Sun Avalon. So at the end of main phase, I'm going to go ahead and summon out the Griffin. So he lets that go through. So now we're going to go ahead and draw for turn. Uh, I think he wanted to take back a play, which was... Uh, he wanted to use the healer there instead, I think. So he's going to go ahead and we bring out the Griffin at the end of the main phase. We draw for turn. Our top deck was insane. Our top deck was a right of Aramis here. It was broken. Now, I had to go big brain here because I had to get over the Jasmine because the Jasmine, the first time it would be destroyed, it's not. So we go ahead and bring out the token. And then that's going to bring out the Faithful. Now we're able to 
go ahead and search off the Fateful. That's going to add us the Enchantress. He's going to Ash that. So now we can't discard the Magnemut, which was going to bring out another Magnemut. So that really hurts us now because we have to we have to think here. Okay, so now we can't discard get a Dark into the Graveyard. So I'm really thinking here, and I had the play, right? So here was the play. We're going to go ahead and go into the battle phase. We're going to battle into the Jasmine, I believe. Because Jasmine is a light. Yeah, so this was big brain here. I just had to think I had to think this through. And I know that we have to get rid of the princess too, because the princess is obviously a negate. And we want to get our bestials live. So we're going back and forth, talking about different plays. He's reading. Well, I'm reading. I obviously have an omni negate. So we're gonna go ahead and I think he active hmm. Trying to follow what's happening here. He negated something. Or we're just oh maybe we're still going over the different cards here. So I apologize. We're we're just talking, we're going back and forth, we're trying to figure it out. So he did negate a magma in hand, I believe, because I think he had a light or dark. So then Mm, maybe it wasn't. But we're going to go ahead and tribute summon the Griffin. That's going to bring out the Magma, which is going to trigger the Faithful. I'm not 100% sure of what he negated here. So I'd have to figure that out. Oh, the Griffin. So, okay, so the f I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to play that one back. So we're going to go ahead and search out the Draco back. Draco back is then going to bounce back the, uh, the Dryas. Then we're going to go ahead and battle with the Magma. We're going to battle with the token that's going to get the Jasmine off the field. And now we can go ahead and Magma, banish the Jasmine. That's going to bring out our own Magma, which is we're going to search at the end phase. Now we take both of those. We're going to overlay for an Atum. Atum is then going to go ahead and activate. And we're going to go ahead and bring out the Apple Dragon. We take the token and the Apple Dragon. And we're going to go ahead and make the Mud Dragon. Mud Dragon effect is going to activate using the Atum. And we're going to go ahead and bring out the Albion. Now we can go ahead and use Albion effect, banishing a tomb and the mud dragon, bring out Grand Goyle. Grand Goyle effect's gonna activate. We're gonna send Lubelion. Lubelion's gonna pitch. We're basically gonna set up our whole bestial control. Yeah, he, he said, go ahead and play it out. So we go ahead and tribute the Albion, bring back out the Lubelion. Lubelion's then gonna activate. That's gonna go ahead and bring out our beast, I do believe. It does bring out the beast. Now we can go ahead and Apple Dragon to banish. That's going to bring out a token. We'd use the token in the Lubelion to bring out the Despotter. Despotter is going to bring back out the Apple Dragon. We take the Grangoyle and the Apple Dragon. And then that's going to go ahead and bring out a Baron. And now at the end phase, we're going to have Beast. We're going to have uh, a two-day set up. As well as we're going to have a Search Off Magma, which is going to bring out a Druus Worm. So it's going to be way too much for the Rika player to try to keep up with. Because we have basically our full combo set up. Um... Oh, I think we have... Hmm, I'm not sure why we... Oh, we probably sided out at two-day, maybe, because we were going second. So then we add the regain to hand, and we add the Druus Worm. And I think that our Rika player is going to go ahead and scoop it up there. So we're going to see the Bestial Control take game three with that insane top deck of Rite of Roramasir. Obviously, you get to see the Atum come into play, which brought out the Apple Dragon, which is another way to bring out Apple Dragon. And then you get to see using the Rite of Roramasir with the Apple Dragon going into full combo. So that was a really good match. Alex is a really good player. Uh, excited to see that and excited to see the bestial control take this match went you know losing game one come back winning game two and three with all that being said this has been tyler with house of cards tcg signing out